Last month, I was invited to be the keynote speaker at the Bass Reeves Convention in Muskogee, Oklahoma, USA. And I was honored to do this uh, and thrilled. And I'd never been to Muskogee. And so it was kind of a, a joy to me to be able to go there because I'm a firm believer that if you want to know about a character, you need to go walk where they walked. And I had never been to Muskogee, which is uh, Bass Reeves' basic hometown. And I wanted to discover something that I think is missing, or at least it was really bugging me. And that is, why isn't Bass Reeves, the legendary deputy U.S. Marshal, a bigger deal in U.S. history? Well, I know what you're thinking, and uh, I thought it too, but it turned out to be a little different than what you might expect. Now, number one is I uh, jammed and uh, did my homework. In fact, we had done a, a cover story on Bass Reeves in True West. So um, I used Art Burton's fantastic book, and that's a black gun, silver star, the, the legendary life of Bass Reeves. And so uh, I was able to do some of his amazing law work. And it, it, essentially, if you don't know the Bass Reeves story, <laughs> it's pretty amazing, okay? So here you have the Oklahoma territories, and there's all these Indian tribes that the United States is throwing in there. It's basically like a uh, a closet in your house where you uh, you know where you put stuff when the company comes over, and you just kind of go, let's put it in there. And that's what the uh, what it eventually became Oklahoma was to the country. They just would go, yeah, the Indian tribes, yeah, yeah, go over there. And so uh, by the 1870s and 80s. Uh, this is one of the most lawless places on earth. In fact, the uh, U.S. Attorney General's office uh, said that uh, of the 20,000 white people living in Oklahoma, maybe 5,000 of them were law-abiding, and that was an estimate. And so uh, the hanging judge, Judge Parker, out of Fort Smith, Arkansas, which was right outside the Indian nations, and that's where the U.S. had jurisdiction, he hired... Uh, deputy U.S. Marshals to go into this dangerous territory and uh, make arrests on felons. And so that's where Bass Reeves entered the story, former slave from Arkansas and Texas. And I could neither read nor write. He was about 6'2", 200 pounds. So he was a big man. And uh, especially in a, a time when the average height of uh, an American was about 5'7". So he, he was a big, formidable man. But uh, when you think about uh, that, he was just muscling his way in, into this area and arresting people. Uh, that was not his M.O. No, 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 no. He would go in with a wagon and a cook and maybe a deputy and him. And his M.O. was to surprise these felons, find out where they were, kind of track them down a little bit. And then he would go in to their camp in the wee hours of the morning, but not just to make the arrest. He would stumble in in a disguise and he would be uh, his favorite disguise was as an old farmer. So he's all hobbled over and the outlaws would look up and they'd go, you know, well, who's that? Who's that old man? And then he would get into the cap and he would stand up straight and arrest them. Now, that's only half the story, OK, because he would regularly go back to Fort Smith with a dozen prisoners. All right. Uh, sometimes. 15, and in one time, 17 prisoners. Now, how do you keep track? Of, how do you hold them, okay? Well, according to the uh, records, he would uh, bring the felon in, another one, and the cook would go, oh, I got another guy I got to feed. And so they would chain them to the, uh, the wagon tongue. So picture this, you're going to try to get a little sleep at night, and there's 17 felons chained to the wagon tongue, and why they didn't just stand up and go, let's go and start pulling the wagon and escape. I don't know, but they had a guard on them all night and they probably took turns. And so Bass Reeves was very successful at this. He would make like $400 a trip. And like I said, he would bring in dozens. And now if you're thinking, oh yeah, okay. So that that's probably what all the lawmen were doing. <laughs> let me give, let me give you some uh, balance here, just, just to give you an idea how extraordinary this is, okay? In the Tombstone story, you have some of the most legendary names. Wyatt Earp, Bat Masterson is there for a time. Doc Holliday, uh, two of them, by Wyatt and Bat, went after the Benson stage robbers in March of 1880, and they, uh, they tracked them for hundreds of miles. In fact, they gave up after a while, and the posse kept on. They never arrested anyone. 
Same is true in the so-called vendetta ride. Wyatt Earp killed maybe three outlaws in that uh, trip, but he never arrested anybody. Okay, so it just shows you that uh, this is so rare. This is so incredibly amazing. It, it, it's hard to fathom. So on that merit alone, um, we have to give kudos to Bass Reeves because he just stands above everyone else. Now, the number used is a 32-year career as a deputy U.S. marshal, uh, 3,000 arrests, and 15 gunfights where he shot people, okay? Now, those numbers are um, a question. There are, are scholars who say that those are inflated. We don't know. There's no like, Well, okay, all right, cut it in half, okay? <laughs> there's, all, there's only 1,500. This is still phenomenal. And uh, you cannot overstate how extra special this is. But as I flew to uh, Muskogee, uh, actually Tulsa, where I was picked up by Sharon, uh, one of the volunteers at the Three Rivers Museum, um, I kept thinking, okay, here's the problem in, in this story. Um, everybody in the movies, and there's two movies being made, just as, as you hear my voice, uh, they all go for the super cop. You know, he's he's Clint Eastwood on steroids, only he's African-American and he's just shooting everybody. And that's really kind of um, uh, one dimensional. Uh, and, and I kept haunting me. Uh, where's the humanity in this story? I want to know who was the man? What, what, what's his integrity? And I found it out an hour before my speech on a bus tour I did not want to go on. And as in life, so many times, sometimes the things you're forced into doing uh, can be life-changing, and this is one of those cases. What happened was I was at the Three Rivers Museum doing a book signing, and I thought I would work on my speech a little bit and hone it in. I had all these details about uh, the, the outlaws that he shot down, that kind of thing. And uh, I went in and I told the director, Angie, I said, you know, I'm going to work on my speech and I'm, I'm not going to go on that bus tour. And she said, uh, absolutely not. You're going on that bus tour. <laughs> and so she's my host. Right. And I went, well, I did say no to that. So I go outside 90 degrees hot. Uh, fortunately, it was an air conditioned bus from the Chickasaw Nation that lent the bus to the museum. And there's 50 of us on the bus. And I got in the back and I thought, oh, boy, this is uh, this is the last thing I need. And so the bus would kind of go around the corner from the museum. We're in downtown Muskogee. And uh, we'd go about a half a block. And then our host or our, our tour guide, Jonita Mullins, would be in the front of the bus with a microphone. And she would say, oh, look who we have coming up here. It looks like a woman in a parasol is going to tell us something about Bass Reeves. And so the bus would pull over and the door would open. And the woman would get on. She was dressed like Old West. And she would, uh, they give her the microphone. And she'd say, I knew Bass Reeves when my father uh, owned the bank that was on this corner right here. And so you'd go, no, we'd learn a little bit about Bass. And then she would get off the bus and we'd go a little bit further. And somebody else would get on and tell us a, a similar story. And uh, we even had a gunfight. We went around the corner and there was a, a big gunfight that ensued. And the outlaws are shooting and uh, shotguns are going off. And I, I'm looking out the window and this one guy's over by a car in a parking lot and he goes down on one knee and he's like holding his, his gut. And I thought, I wonder why he doesn't go down. And uh, I talked to him later at the Civic Center and he said that uh, the pavement was too hot and he has a bad hip. And so <laughs> I just love that kind of stuff. And so then we went on to the next stop. And the next stop was the Baptist Church, the Baptist Church where Bass Reeves went uh, to church. In fact, he was baptized there. In fact, he arrested the pastor who baptized him uh, for, for selling hooch, okay, illegally. And he was trying to pay off a wing of the church. I did love this. And Bass arrested him, okay? The, the, guy, the guy who baptized him, he arrested him, okay? Now we come back around. We have a couple more. There's probably 10 of these. And they were all interesting. They were all... Um, uh, the, the, the volunteers, uh, the people in the museum, they want to play these parts to educate us about Bass Reeves. Well, we come around the corner to at 3rd and Cincinnati. I think that was the intersection. And uh, uh, Janita comes on the microphone and she says, well, I don't see Benny Reeves. Benny Reeves is supposed to be here and I don't see him. We'll, we'll go on to the next stop. So the, the bus goes on and I look out the window. I'm in the back of the bus. I look out the window and here's this black man running <laughs> 
<laughs> but the bus, and I go, well, that doesn't look like a reenactor. That looks like a, a cop, maybe a plain clothes cop for a uh, plain clothes cop for a blow and order. And he runs up to the front, waves, and she pulls over, and he gets on the bus, and he proceeds to say, "Nobody knew more about my father's character than me. I'm Benjamin Reeves. I am his son, and." I married a pretty Muskogee girl, and we were happy for a while. And then I got a job on the Katy Railroad running between Dallas and St. Louis. And I heard the rumors that she was unfaithful to me. And when I confronted her, she not only admitted it, but she kind of threw it in my face. And in a moment of rage, I grabbed a pistol and I shot her. And as soon as I did it, I didn't mean to hurt her, but she was dead. And I immediately thought, what's my dad going to do? And so I ran. And friends told me that the uh, the warrants came down and that nobody in Muskogee would serve the warrant out of respect for my father. Bass Reeves got up, went into the Bennett's office and said, give me the warrant. I'll serve it. Someone has to serve it. And so he knew that his son would probably come back to his house to get some things. And he was there and the son was in the house and all the neighbors were looking out their windows. And Bass Reeves stood in the street and said, son, I want you to come down. I'm going to take you one way or the other. And the son knew that his dad was this legendary lawman. And so he came down, surrendered to his father. He knew that this had to be one of the most difficult arrest that Bass Reeves had ever made in his long and storied career. His father accompanied him to the trial. He uh, was given life in prison at Leavenworth and his father walked him to the train station. And then Benny says, telling us this, that he never did another wrong thing in his life. He was a model prisoner and that the citizens of Muskogee sent um, petitions to the prison and he got an early release but not early enough for his father to see him walk out of that prison he says my, my father was a lot of things but this says more about the man and what he did for me than anything else and he got off the bus the, the actor who was portraying this and I teared up just like I'm tearing up now and I looked around and other people had their heads down and I realized I had found the humanity. He arrested his own son. Now I have a son. I would hire the best lawyer that I could get anything to keep him out of prison. I, I would, if I didn't think he was going to fair trial, I might, I might even tell him to run and I would help him or whatever. Not Bass Reeves. All right. The man had integrity writ large. In fact, if you look up integrity in the dictionary, his flipping picture should be there, okay? That's who this man is. And if they can capture that, and they being all the people who are writing these movies and television series about him, if they can capture that, they will have captured a true American treasure. Uh, so I went to the speech, which was an hour later, in the Civic Center, which, by the way, was where Merle Haggard premiered the song, Okie from Muskogee. Uh, they still wave old glory down at the courthouse, and we don't take our trips on LSD. Uh, that was kind of a thrill to be in the same venue where Merrill, Merrill Haggard was. And, uh, and I scrapped my speech, and I gave this talk, basically what I'm telling you, and told this story about being on a bus ride that changed my life. And uh, I got a standing ovation. <laughs> I've never had a standing ovation. I like to talk about Old West characters and stuff, and it never even was on my mind that a standing ovation would be in order. But those citizens in Muskogee, Muskogee, Oklahoma, stood up and cheered because they recognized the humanity in that story. And I have to say that Jonita Mullins wrote that script. And when I mentioned it to her, what happened on the bus, she said she wept the entire time she wrote it. So obviously, she stumbled onto something that's really important in the telling of this story. Now. The thing that uh, also impressed me, and I think it wraps this entire story up with a bow, 
is the fact that these are all volunteers at the Three Rivers Museum in Muskogee. And the, in fact, the gentleman who uh, portrayed Benny Reeves is, is, a, is a cop in Muskogee. And uh, he, he may have had somebody, he was a good actor, obviously, uh, for me to be, be, be touched like this. But I think that a great quote from Studs Terkel uh, sums up the real heroes of this story. And that is, heroes are not giant statues framed against a red sky. They're people who look around and say, this is my community and it's my responsibility to make it better. And that, my friends, is the secret to this story.